Uh, before we start, I just want to say welcome back. Uh, I love this event. Um, I think that it could be successful if all we did was pull you together for half an hour, give you some coffee and water, and let you talk, because just that energy in the room, sort of that feeling of, of how you fit into the, the greater whole. I think during the school year, when you get into your individual buildings, it's easy to think that the, that the entire district is, is in that building. And it's events like this that give us a, a feeling of that sort of collective impact that when we're all together, how we really uh, can influence the, the lives of students. So I just want to say, welcome back. Uh, this, as you all know, whether it's your first year or your 40th year, is the best time of the year to be an educator. There's so much excitement uh, in the air in this room. Uh, it, Target, at Walmart, with kids buying school supplies, and that's just the parents. <laughs> but one of the beautiful things about education is that every year we start fresh. And one of the great things about this time of the year is sort of the unlimited potential. We don't have any failing students. We don't have students with attendance problems. We don't have uh, anyone who has anything other than an A-plus in the grade book. And so uh, there's a great feeling of, of renewal and refreshment um, of the start of a new school year. So I'm glad you feel that way. I can tell by the, the atmosphere in this room. I always feel like I'm at a wedding reception or something when we get started. I think some year I'm going to just come up and say thanks for coming and, and send you back to your, to your classrooms and we'll have had a successful meeting. But there are some things we want to talk about today. Um, we want to talk about what, some of the goals we have for this year and the role you'll play uh, in our fulfilling those goals. Last year, I told you that I believed that this team had unlimited potential and that together we could accomplish great things. And I believe we did that last year. Now we just need to do it again this year. Before we start, I do want to recognize uh, some individuals who put in countless volunteer hours on behalf of the community, on behalf of the district, helping us set our vision, develop a strategic plan, uh, setting policies, making sure that uh, the, the voice of the community is heard and that we are headed in the right direction as a district. I want to introduce the uh, board members who are able to be with us here today. Uh, first, Tom Barton. <laughs> Tom is beginning his ninth year as a school board member. Craig Baitine, who's beginning his sixth year as a school board member. Board Vice President Tammy Ryan, beginning her fourth year. <laughs> Matt Strelo, board member, beginning his fourth year. <laughs> Tara Siegert, uh, board member, beginning her second year. <laughs> and Jim Prohaska, and I hate to say board member beginning his second year because he's really starting about his 42nd year in education as a retired teacher. I know many of you don't have the opportunity to work as closely with the board as I do, but I need you to know that they do an outstanding job and that they care very deeply about what happens in this district and in this community. So when you have a chance, shake their hand, tell them good job, and, and thank them for their volunteer service. At this time, I would like to invite to the stage Board Vice President Tammy Ryan to share a few words. On behalf of the Board, I would like to welcome you all back. It's hard to believe that summer is over with and we're ready to start another year. What an exciting time to be a part of this district. Just about two years ago, the Board approved a new strategic plan challenging Stan and the administration to think bolder and more strategically. I am pleased to say that now, two years later, the board is very pleased with the direction that the district is going. We have seen the strategic plan take root in ways that we could not have imagined. It is not another plan that is going to sit on the shelf and get lost. And we are not going to go back to the way we've always done. We are also following strategic plans for facility and technology. It is exciting to see the major changes that have taken place at Kennedy, Washington, and Hempstead, as well as improvements at Jefferson, Sageville, the ALC, and the computer labs in all of our schools. And next on the list is the well overdue renovation of Senior High School. Yes. We are continuing to assess the needs of the district's facilities, and we will continue to make the improvements. 
As reported at the Monday's school board meeting, the district is also following the technology blueprint. It was put into place two years ago, and we are committed to the investment and to keep reinvesting into technology. We are putting laptops and tablets into the hands of our students and challenging you teachers to use technology in ways that may be new to some, but is necessary to embrace. The changes in teacher leadership, the school calendar, facility enhancements, growth and activities programming, and so much more exemplify the fact that you are working together as a district like never before. We recognize the stretch some may have with all these new initiatives coming at teachers, especially with the teacher leadership grant. But we are excited to see it fully implemented. There will be bumps in the road, and that's okay because that's how we will grow. We see so many stories of how this district has positively impacted the kids in Dubuque. It is because of you, teachers, paraprofessionals, the Buildings and Grounds Group, transportation, support staff, and administrators. Thank you for embracing these changes and for stepping up to these new challenges. 13 years ago, my daughter started school in Peggy Herbst's kindergarten class. From there, she has only soared. Every year proved to be better than the last. She loved school. It was each teacher, coach, director, and advisor who challenged her and pushed her continually and raising the bar continually that made her the student and the person she is today. I get choked up because one week from today, my only daughter, I'll be sending off to college. It didn't hit me until I walked into senior high school yesterday to pick up her uh, yearbook for her that I realized is my role is different now. I'm no longer the mom at the school. It was the experiences and the opportunities in the Dubuque schools that prepared her for this next adventure. I know she is ready for college because of her time here in the Dubuque schools. I am confident that the great education and opportunities that Taylor received will continue to be available to all students. We have great teachers here in the Dubuque schools. And all of our teachers want all of our students to succeed. Together, we are moving the dial in education. Know that as you move the dial, the board will continue to be strong supporters in tackling new initiatives with a new way of thinking. Thank you for all you do in making this district amazing and have a great year. Thank you, Tammy, not only for your words as a board member, but probably most importantly, your words as a parent. We all know that there are hundreds of students uh, who are starting college and, and other aspects of their lives this year who are well prepared because of the work of everyone in this room. So thank you for, for sharing your, your personal uh, thoughts on that with your daughter. As many of you uh, enjoyed your summer and a well-deserved break, there were folks uh, working very hard to make sure that we had uh, high quality teachers in every classroom and of course I'm talking about the HR department as well as building uh, administrators and building interview teams so you hear me talk a lot about good to great and having the right people on the team and that's uh, something we can never overlook so today to introduce the folks who are new to us uh, is Mr. Rick Cole Pitts the HR director Well, good morning. We got some really, really great hires this year, tremendous hires. We had over 1,400 applicants for, right now, 75 and going up positions. So we have 75 of the best and the brightest. And if you do the math, I think there's some people out there who do math, you're in the top 6% of that 1,400 if you're one of those people that got hired. So let's give them a round of applause for that.
these folks have run the gauntlet. Uh, they've gone through building level interviews, interviews with me, as well as background checks, and, and they're here today with smiles on their faces, very excited to be here, maybe even a little bit nervous. But without further ado, we're going to introduce those folks to you via a PowerPoint that Mike has done. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the building. We want all those people to stand up. Their names will come up on the board. We're going to hold all applause until we're done with all of those folks. So your job as a non-new person is to spin around and look to see if you can find the new people, recognize those faces, and then when you get an opportunity to greet them, welcome them to the district. So we're ready to go, Mike. Ottawa Elementary. All those folks standing up. Oh, they're almost in the same section. Awesome. All right. How about Carver? Where are the Carver folks? All right. Next on the list, Eisenhower Elementary. Okay. Here we go, Fulton. Back in the back, back there, all right. Hempstead High School. Now we gotta scroll through a couple of sheets here, folks, so take a look around. They're scattered all over the place. Hoover Elementary. And guess what? They're not done. We've got a little higher and left to do it at Hoover. Irving. All right. Jefferson Middle School. And they're not done either, folks. We have positions open right now. If you have friends that are in education, you could ask them to apply. <laughs> Kennedy Elementary School. Nobody likes Mr. Potts, so we only got one person there. <laughs> Lincoln Elementary School. All right. And we've got a couple of brand new hires that aren't on that list yet that I believe might be in the audience today. How about Marshall Elementary School? All right. Prescott. And again, we have positions open at Prescott now. Roosevelt Middle School. And we've got to scroll this one, too, because we've got a few hires at Roosevelt. Senior High School. Very popular place to be. I think we have three slides for this group. Stand up, folks. Everybody loves Dr. Johnson. Table Mound. Washington Middle School. And we've got a few slides for this group as well. And the forum staff, which is expanding. All right, now let's have all those folks, all the new staff, please stand right now to be recognized, everybody. Big round of applause. Thank you. Again, welcome. Uh, as Mr. Colpitt said, we have a large selection of folks from which to choose when we do our hiring. That's been long the case in the district. Uh, I think that speaks well of the work that the district has done uh, in the past. It's a place people aspire to be. It's a place where people know that if they come here, we'll welcome them with open arms and we'll do everything we possibly can to help them be successful with students. So new folks, uh, welcome. You're going to love your time in the Dubuque Community School District. Uh, those of you in those buildings, please help uh, those folks get adjusted. Uh, stop by the room and, and uh, say hi or help them with their bulletin boards or whatever it is that they, they need to do. Again, I want to just start by saying welcome back. Uh, I hope you all had some time to disengage, to rejuvenate, to do the things that make you you this summer so that you come back fired up for uh, another school year. And judging from some of the tans I see in the room, a few of you have found a, a way to do that for sure. Last year at this meeting, uh, we talked about finding ways to be more awesome. And as I spent time this summer thinking about our theme, what our theme should be this year, I found myself involved in a lot of conversations that revolved around resources. At the Urban Education Network Superintendents meeting last week, we spent a lot of time talking about funding. 
at the forum, we spent much time this summer talking about technology and facilities and teacher leadership grants. All of these conversations focused on effectively and efficiently utilizing our limited resources. These are common conversations, ones we all have many in many aspects of our lives. It's a conversation we all have at home, right? I know my kids are always discussing ways they think we can better utilize our resources, you know, like a new phone, a better computer, a trip to the Dells, and that was just this morning. <laughs> but as I thought about what the message should be this year, what did I want to say, what did I want uh, you to have as a takeaway, uh, it became clear to me, or clearer than ever, that our most valuable resources is not and never will be money because there will never be enough money to do everything we would like to do in this district. And even if there were, Kevin Kelleher would never let us spend it anyway. <laughs> I think you know where I'm going. Our most important resources are people and time. I will only speak for a few minutes today about the importance of people. I hope you already know that I believe the power of this district lies in your hands. Great teachers, administrators, secretaries, paraprofessionals, building and grounds folks. I would add school board members to that list. Uh, everybody who works in this district, that's what the power, <clears throat> excuse me, that's where the power of this district lies. I'll simply say this. Last year, we accomplished great things because of you. In one of my favorite books, Good to Great, Jim Collins talks about getting the right people in the right seats on the bus. I feel very confident that our bus is truly full of the right people. One of the things that I believe it's important for us to do at this meeting every year is to take just a few moments and talk about the strategic plan. And those who know me probably get tired of that message. But I'm committed, as the board is, to ensuring that we don't forget about our strategic plan and what it calls us to do. We've all been part of uh, strategic planning processes before where two years in, people can't uh, really remember what that, what that plan said. One of the things that I presented last year to this group were what were this, the uh, priority initiatives. So what are some of the things that we could see unfold last year as we began to follow the strategic plan? So I'm certainly not going to read all of these to you, but I do want to point out a few. Uh, that, uh, so the check marks mean that they were accomplished. The green means there's been significant progress. So the computer labs are being finished as we speak at the elementary schools. When you return, if you haven't been there yet, you will have computer labs that have updated equipment. Uh, and be well prepared for our students. We talked about creating an activity bus so more kids could participate in the valuable experiences that they receive when they participate in things outside of the traditional school day. We talked about expanding 21st century learning groups to 72 teachers. We did that. So I'm not going to go through all of this. I just want to make you familiar with this document so that when you receive a copy uh, in the email, which you'll do later today, uh, you take it just a few minutes and, and look at that. Last year at this meeting, I shared with you our strategic plan, priority initiatives for the year. And while we did many more things and were on this list, these actions were directly tied to the overall goals of our plan. Our success last year was directly attributed to you, the people who made this plan come to life. I thank you for internalizing, embracing, and finding direction in the strategic plan. I believe that together we are moving forward in a focused and purposeful way that wouldn't be possible if this plan wasn't our plan. Last year, I asked you to choose a road to awesome. Without a doubt, you lived up to that challenge. When I talk to parents, and as Tammy mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, from across the district, I'm continually impressed with how often they comment on the positive impact you have on their students every day. Today, as we gather to kick off another school year and as we get ready for another year of making a difference in the lives of our 11, nearly 11,000 students, I want to say in advance, thank you for all that you will do every day. You are truly helping shape the future. One more note uh, before I forget to do this. So while we were talking about people, I want to point out a few. And then I know many, many people have worked hard this summer, and so I don't mean to leave anybody out. But there are two groups in particular who I need to point out. Uh, anybody here from Building and Grounds or the custodial crew, would you please stand up? We, we have had a phenomenal summer with our Building and Grounds crew. And as you'll notice, 
most of them aren't here because they are still working many, many long days and hours to make sure the finishing touches are put on the buildings. But if you haven't been back to your buildings, you will be absolutely amazed at the work that these folks do. We had an emergency. Um, got a text from Bill Burkhardt about 11 o'clock one night. The uh, roof at uh, Washington, the drains were plugged because they were doing some repair work. And we had a flood on the, on the top floor. Two days later, you almost couldn't tell it had happened. They did a phenomenal job of making sure that that space is ready for students. Work at, uh, at Hempstead continues, work at Kennedy was finished, and all throughout the district. So we know that appropriate, positive learning spaces impact our students, and Bill and his staff are directly responsible for that. So again, a big round of applause for Bill. Another priority initiative that you've seen on the strategic plan, but more importantly that you've seen taking place in your classroom has to do with our access to technology. That does not happen by itself, as you all know. We don't simply buy computers and plug them in. It takes many, many hours of work uh, from a very dedicated staff to ensure that those uh, access points for our students and staff are, are up and running and maintain not only during the summer but throughout the school year. So the other group I would like to invite to stand up is our IT department, so IT, IT folks. We know that great teachers who have good technology that is re reliable and always uh, ready for student usage really is a game changer. And so we appreciate the work you have done this summer and the work you'll do throughout the school year to make that possible for our students. As we continue to invest in technology, uh, we understand that it's the teachers using the technology that, that makes the difference. And teachers will simply stop using the technology if it's not reliable, dependable. So we appreciate the, the work that you do. Once again this year, we have set some ambitious goals. I think I forgot to tell you last year, you know, the road to awesome never really ends. So we'll share a list of these goals for, for as many years uh, to come, at least as long as I'm the, the superintendent. I am not, I know you can't read this, uh, and that's, that's okay, and I certainly don't intend to read it to you. I just wanted to make you familiar with this document, because just like last year, uh, we have set some priority initiatives. You'll see that there are no check marks, uh, no green or, or red blocks, because we were just getting started with these initiatives. You will also receive a copy of this in your email today. Please take a few minutes and review this in, regards, uh, in relation to the strategic plan and your work. All of our work is called to, uh, be, to revolve around the strategic plan. So I know your principals will be sharing some of this information with you. I just wanted to make sure you knew what it was when you got it in the email and didn't simply push the delete button. At the risk of sounding redundant, it is the people in this room who make the district great. And again this year, I'm asking you to take some time and review our, <clears throat> wow, late summer cold, strategic plan and this year's priority initiatives. It is a collective impact of all of our work that will make these initiatives and many more reality this year. As a team, we need to continue to ask ourselves, how can we be a school district that continually sets the bar of excellence higher and higher and leads other districts to say, let's do it the way Dubuque does. The second resource that I want to talk about today and focus on this year is the irreplaceable resource of time. I challenge you to really focus on time this year. We owe it to all of our students to maximize every second they have in our buildings. We must be smarter and more strategic about how we maximize this precious resource. This year, we have a number of initiatives that are pushing us to look at our time differently, all in an effort to maximize student achievement. When you think about it, time is a great equalizer. It doesn't matter who you are, we all get 24 hours in a day. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Barack Obama, you, me, everybody, has the same number of hours and minutes in a day. When it comes to time, we're on equal ground and what we, it's what we do with it that is important. Embedded within our priority initiatives are a few key items that have the potential to be a game changers in how we use our time. Initiatives that can be the catalyst to move us to the next level of excellence, to help us continue our journey from good to great. The first of those initiatives 
our Friday morning late starts. This extra hour, which will actually give us about 90 minutes of weekly professional development, uh, will provide us with a consistent time across the district dedicated to professional learning. We know that research tells us that the best learning happens when it is relevant and ongoing. That is why we pushed not only for weekly professional learning time for all teachers, but that we made sure it would stay building-based. I believe that this is the way true change will happen. We will have people in our community who will struggle with the change in the system, with uh, child care issues, with a variety of, of the concept that we have less t academic time on a Friday. But I, I believe, and I believe many of you believe, based on the comments I received, that we have to try new things. If we are going to continue to make our students prepared, help them be prepared for the 21st century, we have to try new things. You know, the, I think the definition of insanity is something like continuing to do what you've always done and expecting different results. So we are going to push in new ways to develop initiatives uh, for professional development and professional learning. But again, we want to keep those at the building level because we know that local control, local decisions often lead to the best results. So we want building principals and leadership teams and teachers to have direct input and impact on what happens on those Friday mornings. Think of it like this. How many times have you gone to a single conference or professional learning session and you left thinking it was going to totally change the way you taught or did your job. You been there? Nobody, just me? I know I used to go to those all the time. Wow, this is great. I'm going to go home and, and I'm going to teach social studies so much differently than I have the, the previous couple of years and life is going to be different. And what happens? A few weeks later, you look in the mirror, you listen to yourself in class, and you're doing what you've always done, right? That's human nature. That's not uh, anything that people have done wrong, it's just human nature. We know that new learning in an incremental and sustained way is where true growth will happen. I'm very excited about this. I challenge you to think about that professional development time and think about ways you can share with your families how that has impacted your teaching, uh, whether it be in casual conversations at the grocery store, parent-teacher conferences, newsletters if you're a, a principal. How do we share with our families that the change in the system is worth the, the struggle because it leads to professional learning which, in, which changes and enhances all of the other hours in the student's week. So that's one that I'm sure we'll have some debate about. I'm sure there will be an editorial or two. Uh, but uh, please, uh, if you find that it's effective and important for you, share that with people. They need to know that you need that time that that makes you better, more effective for all of our students. Coupled with the, all of this are changes in the calendar. Just changing the way we count our time with students will make an impact this year. Moving from counting 180 days to guaranteeing a minimum of 1,080 hours for all students. We have planned for 1,100 hours of instruction because while it's been a beautiful, beautiful summer, I do see that at the end of next week they're calling for 89 degree temperatures on Friday, so who would have guessed? Combined with changes in professional learning, we'll give every student more time in the classroom and some students significantly more time just by looking at time differently. Another major way we are rethinking time is through the implementation of the new teacher leadership system. It will truly be a paradigm shift in the district. Looking differently at how we use time to collaborate, to learn from each other, and to share best practices. It gives people more time to focus on enhanced instruction. Our district has a long history of supporting teacher leadership with instructional coaches, technology coaches, teachers on special assignment, but now new funding is allowing us to exponentially increase that number and impact on our students. This grant didn't just happen, it was a culmination of countless hours in many people's behalf. I would like to invite those folks who are on the core committee uh, to stand up real briefly. Lynn, Nancy, David, Tammy, Rick. These folks, uh, Rosie. I, I, I hate going with names because I'll forget somebody. I wanted meant to mention Rosie as well. These folks spent, and I am not exaggerating when I say literally hundreds of hours as late as yesterday morning working through 
the teacher leadership grant process. We started with your input, the input of parents, the input of administrators, uh, the input of the school board, site councils, everybody who's willing to give us input, and usually that's a lot of folks. And some things were really clear. They wanted school-based teachers to stay connected to their kids uh, and to live a life within their building and for as much as possible for those students to con or those teachers to continue to teach. So we've developed a plan that gives us that. Uh, as uh, Tammy mentioned, we will have a few stumbles along the way and that's okay. Kind of reminds me of that domino commercials where failure is an option. We certainly don't want to dwell on failure. We don't uh, target failure, but we know it'll happen. We'll learn from that, we'll grow from that, and we'll move on and be better because of it. We are also rethinking time in many other ways. Those are major initiatives, but there are many smaller ways that we will think about time differently as a district, and we certainly will invite you to think about time in your classroom differently. We'll be looking at ways to maximize our students' extracurricular time by looking at participation, uh, particularly as students transition from eighth to ninth grade. As the parent of a eighth to ninth grade student, it's vital in my opinion, that she participate in extracurricular activities. It ties her to the school. It gives her a relationship that uh, students who choose not to participate in those things simply don't have with, uh, with the building. It makes her, in this case, and I know I'll get booze from half the crowd, but in this case, a Mustang. But it doesn't matter if it's a Mustang or a Ram or what school it is, students who are tied to school through extracurricular activities do better in school and they have a much more positive experience. We'll continue to bolster technology for both students and staff. This year, beginning to refresh teacher computers with newer technology that will increase efficiency and help maximize your time. We will join with other Urban Education Network colleagues in spending time lobbying for student mental health resources, something that is dearly needed by more and more of our students. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be more focused than ever on building level professional development, all in an effort to maximize the vital resource of time. In the end, time will be the key component of our success. We must dedicate ourselves to maximizing every precious second of our time with our students and with each other. We are part of a transformational time in education. Simply put, public education must change, must improve, or will no longer survive. I would feel more urgent if I were not part of the Butte Community School District. I believe we are far ahead of the curve. I think uh, we continue to adapt and get better and better, and I think that uh, the vitality in this room and, and our, in our classrooms will ensure our survival. But there are places where I worry about that, where public education could become extinct, but not in Dubuque. In 20 years, the education landscape will look dramatically different than it does today, and I believe the great schools will be those that have used their time wisely. You are part of something special. You have the opportunity to shape the future in new and exciting ways. To help us think about how important time is to us, we have a short video to share with you that our video producers, Felicia and Mike, put together. Students will spend 3,960,000 seconds in class this school year. Every teacher will spend at least 5,040 minutes in professional learning sessions. It will take two seconds for the first crayon to break. It takes four hours to cook enough spaghetti to feed 3,700 students. It took 22 years for Rick Colpitz to perfect one killer mustache. Time. It never stands still, even if you do. It can be your worst enemy or your greatest ally. When used right, it can be a powerful tool. With time, we can unlock student potential, prepare 21st century learners, foster a culture of collaboration, empower minds and build relationships. Time ages, heals, enlightens, challenges, and makes us grow. It is inevitable and undeniable, but it is up to us to make the most of it. How will you maximize the time we have been given? How can you make sure every second counts? Students will arrive in our buildings in 167 hours in the classroom, on the court, in the studio, on the bus, or wherever it may be. The time we have with our students is a precious commodity. We have 1,100 hours together with students in the classroom. Once they are gone, we can never get them back. 
The 2014-15 school year starts now. Make every second count. Thanks, Mike and Felicia. Great job, as always. As you can see, we do have a lot of time at our disposal. <clears throat> how we use that time will determine how successful we are, how much of an impact we will have on our students. Last year, I asked you to choose the road to awesome. This year, I hope you keep down that path, keep making hard choices, keep pushing the status quo, keep reaching higher, and focus on maximizing every minute of your time. I have a saying hanging in my office that some of you have probably seen that I like to refer to. I don't know where or who, how to attribute the quote. It's probably some cheesy Hallmark writer, but uh, I do think it makes an important point and, and one that I like to refer to often, and, and it goes like this. This is the beginning of a new day. You have been given this day to use as you will. You can waste it or use it for good. What you do today is important because you are exchanging a day in your life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever. In its place will be something you have left behind. Let it be something good. Please remember that you have the great gift of time and that your students are counting on you to make every second count. Thank you. Let's have another awesome year, and let's make, give these kids the best year uh, we've ever given them as, as a school district.